I'm Sir Stuart Edrington. I'm the Chief Executive of the National Council for Voluntary Organisations. Sir Stuart, welcome to the Sustainable Communities Conference. Tell us what you see the role of the voluntary sector as being when it comes to delivering sustainable communities. Well, I think uh, voluntary organisations have always been part of the big society. Uh, they've always been engaging people in voluntary action, engaging citizens in trying to influence things, as well as providing services for those in need. I think what the government's trying to do is to see what scope there is for voluntary organisations to do a little more in these circumstances. So what do, what do you see will be the positive and negative impacts on the voluntary sector when it comes to the big society? Well, I think in positive terms, it can give more power to citizens to influence events and to run services themselves, uh, to form co-ops, to form mutuals, to form social enterprises, to form charities to help with this. And I hope the government provides an environment in which that can happen more, more giving of time and money, more investment in services. The downside, of course, has to be that the government is trying to do this at a time of great austerity. And asking people to do more with less is a much more difficult ask. Many voluntary organisations will suffer cuts at a local level, and that's making it much more difficult. And I think it's making people more cynical about what I think are the government's good intentions. Mm. What do you think, then, are the main issues for the voluntary sector when it comes to climate change and contributing to a low-carbon economy? Well, in that particular area, I think what we need to do is have the right support structures. I think voluntary organisations naturally want to do something about that, either in their campaigning role, convincing others to change their behaviour, but also in the way that they run their services themselves. Uh, so they can make a contribution. We employ 600,000 people. We have quite a lot of capital plant ourselves. So we can make a big contribution ourselves, but also the crucial role for the voluntary sector is, is campaigning. Obviously, you've already mentioned the difficult economic times in which we live. What are the main challenges for the sector over the next five years? Well, the sector has become much more uh, fuelled by public money over the last 10 years, and therefore the reduction in public spending will have a greater effect than it otherwise would have done. It doesn't affect all areas, overseas development, uh, some other particular areas, it's OK. But there's quite a lot of areas where voluntary organisations will be feeling the pinch. What I think they need to try and do is buy time to try and diversify, uh, to try and think through strategies, sharing back office, merging in some cases, uh, trying to uh, get to scale, or dealing with very local issues in a local way and not trying to grow. Ways of actually engaging volunteers, almost going back to our roots, that seems to me one of the big challenges for voluntary organisations. What's your own personal vision for the voluntary sector? Well, I, th I think it's, it's, it's going to do more. And I think there is an element in me that welcomes that. Uh, I think probably the state had got a little bit too intrusive. Uh, the state was very valuable to the voluntary sector, but maybe it did get a bit too intrusive. The contracts are a bit too tight. Uh, maybe there is an element of freedom here that we need to think about. It also, I think, develops the possibilities of that uh, other great value of the voluntary sector, which is building fraternity, building reciprocal relationships, which I think is going to be quite important. So I'm optimistic about the sector's ability to rise to the challenge. And what do you think delegates here today should take from this conference? I think, I hope they'll take away a couple of things. Firstly, is a greater understanding of what's happening in the world, you know, greater understanding of what the implications of these policy changes might be. But I hope they also go away with some practical advice. I've already spoken to one delegate who the perennial argument is where could we get funding? Well, we run a website on behalf of the government called Funding Central. Go on, click on. Lots and lots and lots of funding and grants uh, available on that. So. That will be always the question. So I hope they get some practical advice too. Mr Stewart, thank you very much. Thank you.